this is Zach. In this video, I'm gonna show you five super simple tips that I wish I knew before I start using Roam. I think it will make Roam easier to use as well as more productive. So now let's get started. When you first starting to use Roam, one of the things to remember is not trying to copy all the old notes from other notes app. I did that before as I tried to copy all my old Evernote notes into Roam and that just made a mess. Roam actually encouraged you to take a bottom-up approach where you write about the basic element first and then later on you link them and build upon it and grow your knowledge graph. So you don't really need to copy all the old notes at once. What I recommend would be that you start off on something like a daily journal or perhaps a project you're currently working on and grow your Roam database based on that. For instance, here in my daily page, I can just write something that, you know, what happened today. For instance, I met um, Jack Ma today. And uh, here you can just inline type it and then shift and click and then you can just Updated in the sidebar, so describe who Jack Mine is. So he is rich, his phone number is what, you know, blah, 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 etc. Right? So you can just create your page right here and then uh, update it here. And then let's say tomorrow I met him again, so June 22nd. And you just say, okay, I met uh, Jack Ma, All right? And it's already created, so you have something like this. And then if you click on Jack Ma, you're gonna automatically have these two references here uh, with the content you just updated. As you write more, then you're gonna have more references and more link, and that's just how Rome works. When you create a new page, uh, especially something like a book, an article, maybe a project, I recommend you to put an alphabet in front of the page title. So for instance, if I'm writing or I'm reading a book called Cosmos and I will do something like this, it would be say B and then Cosmos, right? So, the point here is that uh, as you write more in Rome, that you might have a lot of a thing such that they use similar title. For instance, you can have something like this. Uh, if I do show your work, right? And then I have a book called show your work and then I have an article called show your work as well. So then if you don't put an alphabet in front, then as you write more and more in Rome, it might be harder for you to find the exact content you want. So this way that you categorize them, it's like a namespace, so such that you can locate them easier. Roam has this internal highlighting function, it's Ctrl H that helps you to highlight a part of the text. The way I use it is usually, for instance here, um, it's a blog or article from Tiago Forte. And let's say if really you know, this part, this paragraph, I think is really cool. So then I can just do uh, this part and then I say Ctrl H, then it will be highlighted, right? And let's say if beside that this is someone else wrote it, right? If I have some reflection on that, right? Then usually I use co inline. Uh, you do co inline and then which is just to back quote, which is on top left of your keyboard. You say, this is very interesting, right? And uh, then you look at it, then it looks like this format. So code inline is more for people who want to show their code to others. But, you know, I use it in a way that I don't really code. So I just want to uh, have a different type of style. So that way I can distinguish between what someone else wrote it and then where is this my reflection. And then after that, I can actually put a tag and then say reflection. So I have this reflection category and if 
we click on that, and then this is all the reflection I have on various articles, right? And then uh, on top of that, you know, you notice there's a little libel icon here. So Rome, you know, you can easily put a lot of icons. And then you look at here, I have uh, all these categories where, for instance, Go project tests, they're all grouped together uh, because from goals you can come up with project, from project you come up with tasks, and you have to review lists, and then all these are references, and then uh, they use the same icon, so article books, and then this is all everything that's related to something I created myself. So I wrote a blog or it's reflection of myself on some other articles, uh, or it's on my own thought. How do you do icons? You do uh, in Windows, you do window command, and then you do plus period, and then you have all these icons, right? So you can create all those icons and then use them, you know, as you wish. The next tips is that when you have a bunch of text that you need to type repeatedly, then you can use a template. So here I have a template page. Uh, in here, you can see I have, you already have template for articles and books and blogs. So uh, let's do uh, go back to daily note and then shift and click on template. So template on this side. Let's say I'm reading a book today. So I'll say I'm reading. This is called uh, Titan, right? And then when we go into this book. And there's a bunch of attributes or keyword or metadata. I just always need to copy over. So here I'll just copy from the template page and then, and then you can just fill out, you know, all the author and recommend by who all the other data that you need for this. Well, there's actually an even quicker way. So, um, to do that, there are a bunch of tools. There's something called text blaze, there's something called text bender and keyboard master. So I'm using text blaze and then we'll use that as example. So what it does is that it assign a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut, which bunch of the text that you want to put in. So in this case, I already fill in this book and then here, instead of copy and paste and faster way is because I already set it up, so I can just say slash book. And then you can see that all the attributes have just been filled out. So this is very convenient as well. For instance, every morning I need to do a kind of daily routine sort of thing. So I have a slash routine command. And then you can see everything just fill out like that. And then you can put in the data or the content you want. If you want to download the tools I just mentioned, I will add the links below the video. In Rome, it's actually very convenient to display everything under a category. What I mean by that, for instance, I have this uh, book page. If you look at it, it actually doesn't have any content inside. So uh, the whole purpose is, I call it the filter page. So here it will display everything or all the books that I read where I took notes and then uh, such that it has this book page embedded inside. So let's click on one of them. If you go in here, you can see here we have the, the book page here and then I have all the attribute nest underneath it and including the book notes. So now once you have this kind of format, if you go back to the book, here, then I will see everything, right? All the book I ever read, as well as all the attributes. And, you know, the attributes is actually expandable, so you can, because it's nested. So actually, I can, if I want to see all the book notes, I can actually expand, and I will be able to see all the book notes here. So that's very convenient. There's one thing to note is that in order to show everything here, you need to make sure this attribute is actually nest underneath this book. So for instance, if I go in here, this is the actual book. 
if I actually moved all these attributes, uh, something like this, and shift tab, and we just make it parallel to the book page. Then if you go book here, then it won't show any attributes because they're not underneath this. It will only show like one block. So in order you want to have some sort of effect like this, then you need to make sure all these attributes is nested underneath when you set it up. So I all this stuff need to be underneath the book. All right, that's all I have for today. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, please leave the comment below and have a good one.